Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and this is CRAP video number 23. CRAP video stands for Creative Relaxation and Play, and it's where I play around and experiment with products that are new or that I already have. And I've been watching some videos lately on YouTube where people have been experimenting by making background papers using felt tip markers, and that got me thinking about the different types of felt tip markers that I have. And I have ones that have, are alcohol based like Copics. Uh, these aren't actually Copics, these are Spectrum Noirs. And uh, actually they're Spectrum Noir Aqua. So these are water ones. Um, I'll have to switch those out in a minute for the regular ones. And uh, some Sharpies. And over here on watercolor or in water soluble, I've got some of the Jane Davenport um, what she call these? The mermaid markers and some of her new aqua pastels. And I've also got some dilution paint pens, which I believe are acrylic, so they should be water soluble, I think. I've got some clean color real brush markers, which are also water soluble. And I've got some Vicky Booten crayons, again, water soluble. And I need to find a few more things. I could use alcohol inks, but everybody's done alcohol inks before, so I'm not going to bother with those. I have got my spray bottle of water for the water soluble ones. I'm putting those on watercolor paper. And the alcohol based ones, I'm going to use um, blending solution, the Tim Holtz or the Ranger blending solution. And I'm using photo glossy paper. Uh, for those as well. So let me grab a couple of other things and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my equipment assembled here and I'm not sure how any of this is going to turn out, but we're going to try it. So I'm going to start with some of the water soluble products first. And let's start with the Jane Davenport mermaid markers. As you can see, I've just grabbed these colors sort of at random, but I am trying to avoid mud. So I did pick colors that are fairly next to each other on the color wheel. And um, I think to start with, I'm just going to... Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll wet my watercolor paper first with a spritzer bottle of water. And I'm just going to touch the inks to this. Now my card is going to warp, but that's okay. And I th think I might need a little bit more water. There we go. And I'm just trying to see what kind of an effect I can get with these. And let's just get a little bit more of a spritz here. Now I may have, may have added a little bit too much water. These are kind of on the faint side. So um, I think I'll hit it with the heat gun for a minute. Now once this starts to dry, it should uncurl itself. But right now I can say that these colors are coming out very pastel-like. Not unpleasant though. There we go, we're uncurling now. And maybe we'll just uh, dab that on the edges. And 
And let's just hit that again with the heat gun. Okay, that's probably dry enough for our purposes. Now you can see that the colors came out fairly pastel -y, um look, which isn't bad, but I think I'm going to add a little bit more. But instead of wetting the card this time, I'm just going to put some blotches on. And I'm squeezing the barrel of the pen to get this to come out more in a puddle. Now I'm using watercolor paper, but I think you could do this probably on a on a heavy card stock as well. You probably get more warping. And I'm not sure if the colors would spread as well. Okay, let's just spritz it. Well, that's kind of pretty. Okay, so this time let's just let it run again a little bit. So really, I think the more layers of color you put on, the more you're going to get a uh, deeper color base. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump ahead here after I have this dry so you don't have to sit here and watch this do its thing. So you can see that's what I got by putting the uh, mermaid markers directly onto the watercolor paper and spritzing with water. Now I thought I would try this technique using the same product but putting them on acetate first and then dipping them down. So I'm just going to scribble some color on here. And I'm not going to add any water to this card. I'm just going to take it and schmook it down. Technical term, schmooking down. And that's kind of interesting because I got sort of a splattered look. So I think what I'll do is I'll just hit this with the heat gun for a second. Okay. And then I'm going to just wipe off my acetate here. And I think I'm going to get a little bit more of the orange in here. And a little bit more of the uh, pinky color. There goes my email. I always forget to turn it off when I'm doing a video. And do the same thing. Now, I'm assuming that once these are dry, they will not be reactivated with water, but we'll give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, I think I'm very dry. So I think I'll just Lightly spritz a little water on here. Let it sit for a second and see what happens when I dab it. Well, some of the color does come up. But not a lot. 
Okay, I think I will leave that one just as it is for now. Clean off my acetate. And let's just put those aside. So those were the Jane Davenport mermaid markers. So let's take another piece of watercolor. And this time, let's try the uh, Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, which are a similar product to the uh, Jane Davenport markers. And uh, let's wet the card again like we did the first time. And then just now these I cannot squeeze the barrel on, so I can't. I have to sort of dab them like this to get the color to come out. Or I could just paint it on. I'm using colors that are all sort of similar, just for comparison purposes. Okay, let's uh, give this a spurt, spritz. And let the colors run. Okay, let's hit that with the dryer. And again, I'm going to jump okay, ahead. Okay, now my piece is dry, but I'm going to add some more color to the top of this. And I'm not going to uh, put down any water to start with. I'm just going to see if I can get these pens to... I'm sort of dabbing this on. It's easier with the Jane Davenport mermaid markers to add the color using this method, as you can see. And that's mainly because I can squeeze the barrel on. They're, they're truly water brushes, whereas these have a hard barrel. Okay, let's give it a little spritz of water and see if it reactivates. And it does. And I'm kind of liking that effect. It's a little bit more controllable as much as one can control a watercolor marker. And because my card wasn't quite as wet, I'm not getting quite as much movement, but I'm getting some. It's wicking out, as you can see. And I kind of like that wicking. And I'm just letting it do its thing here. Okay, so let's hit that with the heat gun. And again, once the colors dry, I can dab up some of it, but it's fairly permanent. Now that's not to say that if you were to take a, a paintbrush and a wet medium and brush over it, that it would not necessarily start to streak or run. It probably would a little bit. Flip it over to get the warp out.
Okay. So let's take the acetate sheet again, a new piece of watercolor cardstock. And let's do what we did last time by applying some of this directly to the acetate and then onto the card. I'm not going to add any water to this. Just going to use the moisture that's already in the markers themselves. Oops. Okay. Oh, not getting anything off but these. No, nope, not juicy enough. So let's give them a little spritz. Let's see if this makes a difference. And it does. However, I'm not getting the kind of coverage that I got with the Jane Davenport ones. They're just a little bit juicier for this method. But again, it's not a total loss. Because I am going to do something with these once I've finished experimenting with the reactive properties of these markers. Okay. I'll finish drying this and we'll move on to our next so our product. next product are the Spectrum Noir Aqua markers. Now these are different from the Spectrum Noir markers because these are alcohol based, these are water based, and that's why they're called Aqua. So we're going to spritz our card. Now these ones are going to come out a little bit more pastel-y too, I think. But as soon as they hit the water, they do bloom out. But my card is drying up pretty quick here, so... See what happens when we spritz it again with water. Some movement, but it's not as good as the other two products, and it's definitely not keeping its brilliance and its color. They're definitely very faded. So this time I'm just going to scribble some color on top of this. I have this dry now. I see I've got a couple of spots that I dripped a little water on. So I'm just going to scribble color. These have two tips. Use the brush. Okay. Spritz it. And I was pretty generous on the water here. And I'm not really thrilled with what this, this is doing.
We've got some color, but really it's sort of nondescript here. So let me dry that off and we'll try the um, acetate. Now one thing I discovered as I was drying this, uh, if I tilted the card up and got some of it to run down the card, I got this kind of effect here, which is kind of neat, it has potential. So let's take another piece of watercolor cardstock and find my acetate. It's right here, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to do this dry. I'm not going to spray any water on this to start with. Scribble my aqua markers. If I can get the lid off, onto the acetate. Caps on these fit pretty tight. This piece of plastic, by the way, that I'm calling acetate, which is what it is, is just simply some packaging. Hmm. It's not very bold, but it's definitely got some texture to it. Okay, I must turn off that email. All right, I'm just going to hit it for a second with this. Now, I still have quite a bit here on the acetate, so I'm just going to spritz it. I got a lot of green out of that. But actually, that's not a bad effect. And I could probably go over this with uh, maybe one of the other colors. In fact, that's what I think I will do. this off first. So let's get some more of the blue onto there and maybe a little bit more of the purple. Wrong end. Now I'm just playing. Okay. So again, um, these aqua markers do not seem to spread as well as the Jane Davenport Mermaid markers. But again, it gives you a little bit different effect. Okay, let me clean up here and we'll try our next one. Okay, so the next product I'm going to try are these Delusion paint pens. Now I am assuming these are acrylic paints because they're just like uh, her uh, delusion paints so I'm giving them a good shake oh, that one doesn't seem to oh, there we go now I have not used these at all very much and they have a fine tip to them so I have no idea what they're going to do this one doesn't there we go there's a little mixing ball in these Okay, so these have a really fine point, so... Yeah, 
you have to get the paint running on these. Now because they have such a fine point, I think it would take forever. But we'll just scribble a little bit in this one section and see what happens. But right off the bat, I'm pretty sure this is a complete uh, fail in terms of the, what I'm trying to do here, what the technique is. And that is trying to get these to run and make sort of a abstract type of background. Okay, let's see what happens. Hmm. Just like I pretty much predicted. Well, if you put enough water on them, you'll get something. Okay. I'm not disliking that. You know, on a small background, on an art journal page or on a, um, a scrapbooking page, this might be somewhat effective. But if you want to cover a larger area, I don't think these are going to work. And I'm just going to partially dry this. And I'm going to jump right to the acetate and see what happens. I don't anticipate we're going to get much of an effect. Again, because they have such a fine point. Well, they're, they're meant for, for drawing. They're meant for outlining. Um, they're not really meant for this technique at all. But you know, it's a crap video, so I thought I'd give it a shot. You never know what kind of effect you might get. That's all part of the experimentation here. Okay, and I'm going to give that a spritz. Now I am getting mud, so my colors are mixing a little too much. Let's dab this. It's a different effect. Um, I'm not going to say I don't like it, but I don't know if I would have the patience to do this. It could be interesting, though, on something. Okay, let's set that aside to dry. Get these out of our way. And I've got one piece of watercolor paper left. And I have one product left. And these are the Vicky Bouton crayons, which are water soluble. And with these, I'm going to try this. I'm going to wet my paper and take my crayon and apply it directly. Now, I'm not getting any kind of movement on here, but oops, well, there's the tip off ones. One thing I don't like about her crayons is that they're so soft, they break very easily when you're dealing with a whole lot of tips. That's about my only complaint with them. Okay. getting very little movement with the crayons. Now if I took uh, a paintbrush, take a soft one, what will happen? Well that's what they're really meant to do. They're meant to blend. 
but for what I'm trying to achieve here, these are a no-go. Let's dry that. Now I am going to try the acetate because I think she does the acetate in one of her videos. Things are getting a little moist over here. Let's do a mop up. And I put a fair amount of water on that card too, so it's warping pretty good. But I have a little secret method for flattening them out after they're all dry. And that's called my laminator. Put it on the highest heat, uh, highest heat setting. Put these in your carrier. Put them through. You flatten them out. You can use an iron too, but I'm lazy. Okay, we have our acetate right here, and let's just take some of the colors, scribble them. See how soft they are? They break very easily and you get little chunks. That's one thing I don't like. They are very, very soft. I'll just stick to those three colors. So, yeah, let's see what happens. Well, Actually, this method of applying the color would be better, I think, than just trying to scribble them on. So you got little pieces right there as well. But let's just dab. Overall, I'm not really that thrilled with what I've created here because you can see the scribble marks. So like I said, they, these crayons were meant for coloring in and blending and not so much for this technique that I'm using. Okay, so that's all the water soluble. Oh no, I've got one more water soluble product, the Aqua Pastels um, by Jane Davenport again. Should have used those a little earlier. I need to cut myself some more watercolor cardstock so I'll be back. So these are the Jane Davenport Aqua Pastels. I just got these not too long ago and I really haven't used them on anything much so let's wet our watercolor cardstock here and apply them directly Okay, let's hit them with the water. Let's see if we can get them to run. Not really. Okay, let's take the paintbrush. Let's see what happens when we go over them with the paintbrush. Hmm. They do not blend at all. And I've got a lot of water on here. Now again, this product is probably not made for doing this technique. And I'm not saying this is a bad product either, because I do like the colors that they're in. And uh, if you use them the proper way, they work very well. You can see how wet I got that cardstock because it's sticking here. It's pooling up. So I am going to try it on the acetate as well.
And it's going to take me a little longer, so I'll skip. Okay, let's try the acetate. We'll scribble on some color. Now, one thing I'll tell you about these, as, a, as compared to the Vicky Booten crayons, these ones do not break. They're very firm. Okay. Well, I'm not that impressed. But I got some color laid down on there. So, but that's the last of the water soluble products that I've been talking about. And from all of these, I think the ones that worked the best were the Jane Devonport uh, Mermaid markers. I think they worked the best. Um, for this technique. So let's put this aside. And we'll get rid of that. Let's pull this over. There's little pieces of Vicky Booten still on here. I'm sorry, but that does, it does annoy me that they crumble like that. Mind you, when they crumple like that, you can mix them with your glaze and they will dissolve in the glaze and you can tint your glaze. Okay, so what I've got here is photo glossy paper. And I've got some Sharpies. And I've got two forms of alcohol. This is ordinary rubbing alcohol, about 70% solution. It might be a little higher, it might be 90, but I'm not sure. And then I've got the alcohol blending solution, which is essentially, this is from Ranger, essentially is the same thing. There might be slight difference, I don't know. So, I have some Sharpies. Now, Sharpies are not water-based. These are permanent markers, so I'm just going to scribble down some color, and then I'm going to apply some of the alcohol. And see what we get. Well, Sharpie's a little dried up, I think. Okay, so let's try the alcohol blending solution. Now, if you use these with alcohol inks, you know what happens that they all spread out. Oops, but will that work on the Sharpie? And I want to say, no. Well, don't speak too soon. Oh yeah, you can. This could be interesting. Okay, let's just add a little bit more. Let it have a second to sort of dissolve the marker. Yeah, I think you could have a little fun with these. This is kind of fun. Now, of course, you want to be careful about getting these on any clothes or on a surface, because unlike the water solubles, these ones are not going to wipe up as easily, and they could stain your craft mat permanently. I've got a piece of deli paper under mine. Let's just hit that with the heat dryer. Now, one thing I'm noticing as I hit them with the heat dryer, the color does fade. Some of the colors fade a little bit. The one thing that's nice about them is that they're very permanent. Okay. 
let's try it. See what happens if we spritz it with the regular alcohol. Let's just leave it for a second. Now I'm getting some, you can't see it on camera, but I'm getting some very interesting effects. I'm getting sort of a blotchy um, watermark kind of effect. The longer it stays on here, the more it dissolves it, though. So this could be interesting to play around with a little bit. You might get some very unique effects. And by the looks of things, you don't really need to use this, which is much more expensive than just using going to the drugstore or Walmart and buying a bottle of uh, rubbing alcohol. Now I think I am using a fairly high one. I think I'm using a 90 percent. But I think it would probably work with 70 as well. Might take longer to dissolve. So I'm getting some kind of neat effects here. I'm just letting it do its thing. Of course, the one advantage of using this kind of stuff, too, is that it does dry fairly quickly. And remember, I'm doing this on glossy cardstock. You would not get this effect on uh, watercolor paper or ordinary white cardstock because it would just absorb right into it. The inks need to stay on top of the surface to get them to move. Okay, let's just dry that off. Now, alcohol inks themselves do a better job than the Sharpies do. But in a pinch, you didn't have any of the alcohol inks, or you didn't have a certain color, but you had one in a permanent Sharpie, then um, you might be able to get away with that, depending on what you were trying to do. Okay. So that's the Sharpies. So now, of course, you do see that I got my scribble marks in there too. Maybe if I put more alcohol on it. Let's try this. Let's just try tripping this on here and just letting it sit and see what happens. See if it has any reaction. If I did that with alcohol inks, you know what would happen. It would bloom out. It is doing sort of that here, but not in the same. It's not really a, a circular pattern like it is on um, with the alcohol inks. But nevertheless, it does have kind of a neat effect. I'm just trying to get it to bleed a little bit more. Now this is this alcohol, the regular alcohol. Oh, it seems to be have more of an effect on the Sharpies, I think. Oh, well, you could play with this all day. Now, I didn't get those. I shouldn't have scratched maybe so hard with the Sharpie on that one.
but definitely has potential. What's nice is it's on glossy paper, so if you like something with a high gloss shine to it, this would give that to you. Okay, let me clean up here and we'll try the uh, Spectrum Noir markers. So here are the Spectrum Noir markers, and I'm going to do the same thing as I did with Sharpies. I'm just going to scribble these down onto my glossy cardstock. Now some of these are a little bit dry because I have not used them in quite a while. Oh. That's a better tip. Try that. Oh yeah, this has a wider wedge tip. Okay, let's try it first with the Ranger alcohol blending solution. I don't see a lot of movement here. Oh, we're getting some. Let's try a little bit more. Let it have a second to soak in. Again, this would take some time. It doesn't blossom out like the alcohol inks do. But with a little patience, I think you could create something kind of different. Okay, let's uh, spritz it with the regular rubbing alcohol and see what happens. Whoa, leopard spots came up on there. I don't know if you could see that on the camera. Slightly different reaction with the regular rubbing alcohol than with the uh, alcohol blending solution. Kind of neat though. Okay, let's set this up here for a second. Clean up some of this before I'm wearing it. And it's going right through. Okay, let's hit it with the heat gun. Okay, let's try some drops of this and see what happens.
I'm getting some water marking here. Or maybe I should call it alcohol marking, which is kind of cool. Just let that. And let's try it with a few drops of the regular. Not getting as fast of reaction, although there is some reaction. Okay, my paper really curled on this one, but you can see there are some interesting effects here. So, just to put this in perspective with regular alcohol inks, and right now I'm thinking that the Spectrum Noir markers work better, and I would assume that Copic markers would work the same way because they're both basically alcohol-based uh, type markers. But just as for sake of comparison, I'm going to get a couple of alcohol inks and just show you, if you've never seen it, how they react to um, spraying them or dropping on uh, alcohol. Okay, I have some alcohol inks here, so I'm just going to grab some at random. I'm not really caring about the colors, but this is what you traditionally do with alcohol inks. You just drop them onto the surface. Take another color and you can drop it in white spaces or you can let them blend together. And I wonder if I have a little lighter color here. And I think I need another little lighter color. Try a little of this. You can see what happens when you put these and let them touch or overlap or drop them into the center. Some of the other ones, you do get some. little overlaid circles. And then if we drop some of the alcohol blending solution in, it's not really reacting in the way that I thought it was going to react. I don't know why. But let's just pick this up and see if we can get it to run a little bit. Now this stuff is a real bitch to get off your hands. But you can use the alcohol for that. Okay. It's kind of funny, this actually penetrates. So be aware of that if you're using deli paper, have something else underneath it. Because the alcohol inks seem to go through it. Okay, let's just dry that.
Now let's just spray it with the regular. And what's it doing? Anything? Not a lot. And let's give it a little bit more. Now I really don't know why this isn't reacting the way I thought it should. I wonder if it has anything to do with the uh, type of photoglossy paper I'm using. This is not the usual photoglossy paper that I use. Um, it's a different brand, but I had it laying around so I thought I'd try it. So there could be the difference between the brands of uh, photoglossy paper. So I want to try one more thing. This removes ink. Oops. So let's see. Well, removes some, but not a lot. Okay, so what I want to show you was how, with regular alcohol inks, this, um, interesting creaks, uh, how this usually reacts to it totally differently than it would with the uh, other two products I was using, with the um, Sharpies and with the uh, um, Spectrum Noir markers. But I'm not getting the effect that I thought I should get. Hold on for just a sec. So, you were probably wondering what I'm going to do with all of those backgrounds that I created. Ta-da! I made butterflies. I used the Tim Holtz Dual Butterfly Bigs die, and I cut them out. I glued them together, and I put two butterflies together. The one on the bottom is a little different from the one on the top, but they were from the same color card, and I just glued them in the center, folded up their wings, and then I gave the ones that weren't done with alcohol ink, which are these ones in this row, a little spritz of iridescent medium. Or you could have used a Wink Estella, whatever, just to give them a little bit of a shimmer. Now, I have a whole set of embellishments that I can use on an art journaling page, or in my scrapbook, or on a card. So, that's what you can do with these uh, backgrounds. So, as far as crap is concerned, was it a success, was it a fail? Mixed results, but overall, even when I, I had some that didn't blend as well as others or run with the water as well or run as well with the alcohol, I still was able to use every one of them to create these embellishments and they look pretty good, I think. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for another crap video soon. Bye-bye.